Today at Premier, we're going to demonstrate a shepherding skill that I think every sheep producer needs to have. Uh, we're seeing more problems in late gestation with classic ketosis, but we're also starting to see more problems with milk fever as we are selecting for more ewes giving birth to twins, triplets. They're producing more milk, especially as we use NSIP and increase our genetic merit for milk. So today, I have Dr. Cindy Wolf here with me, who is also a retired sheep specialist. She was the small ruminant specialist at the University of Minnesota. She currently has a uh, flock of sire maxes, and she and her husband run about a thousand commercial ewes in southeast Minnesota. So we're glad to have Cindy here today, and she's going to talk a little bit about how we would do this uh, to try to get a differential between does she have ketosis, so she needs one therapy, or does she have milk fever, which is a hypocalcemic situation, so she needs an additional therapy. So you can take it from there, Cindy. Okay, so what we're looking at is a ewe in the last two weeks of pregnancy, and it's either slow, doesn't come to the feed bunk, doesn't stay at the feed bunk, or it's already down. And unlike a cow, the most reliable sign that we can look at as a sheep producer is to close her eye, so we're simulating a dark room, and then take your flashlight, and everybody always seems to have their cell phones on them, and get get your flashlight on, and so bear with me. We've got her eyes closed for maybe a minute, and then shine your flashlight in and watch how quickly the pupil goes from being wide open, so fully a black eye, to a constricted pupil. And that's about the amount of time you'd need to do that. And so if it's real slow, then you know she has low calcium or milk fever. If, it, if you're not sure what you're seeing, then you remember no one only owns one sheep. You can always go compare to a normal late pregnant you that's eating normally and just grab her again, cover up her eye, pretend like it's a dark room and shine the flashlight right in that eye to look how quickly that pupil constricts down to a small size. If it goes pretty quickly, then she doesn't have milk fever. She instead has ketosis as her main issue, and that needs to be addressed like right away, not tomorrow, not the next day, if you want to have a good outcome. And so your recommendation on milk or for ketosis would be energy source of some sort, and you like to give banamine because it kind of gets them through it well, so there, for some reason? Actually, there's a published paper out of Israel with a, with a group of sheep that the outcome was way better using banamine than not using it. As a supplemental to go with the energy right. and everything else. Right. Okay. And so like what do I personally do? I give them calf electrolyte fluids to drink and I give them two ounces of propylene glycol one or two times a day. Too much propylene glycol upsets the rumen and you get a bad outcome there. So that's the energy sources I okay. usually lean on. But you got to, and you stay with it for several days until they get back to eating well, right? Right, or they give birth if they don't. Hopefully. Yeah. As far as milk fever, what do I do? I give all my calcium under the skin. So ahead of the shoulder, in the armpit, maybe right here in a real well-conditioned you like she is. And I give between 60 and 100 mils depending on the size of the uh, sheep. Caldex? Yeah, of the 23% um, calcium boroglucanate. Okay. Yep, yep. And so I just would give 25 mils here, 25 here, and 25 there, and they absorb that, and within 30 minutes, they're back on their feet. And, and the reason we're doing this session today is we have problems with heat milk fever here at Premier because we are pre-jugging those ewes ahead of lambing. We've got a lot of Romanoff genetics. We're getting lots of triplets and quads. And we change the feed when they go in the lambing jugs and that's throwing them off feed. And as Cindy and I talked about coming down, we think maybe we're seeing more milk fevers because we're using a lot more soybean hulls in the diet and trying to cut back on hay because hay is really expensive. If we've got alfalfa hay, we've got plenty of calcium. But soy hulls are not as high or at worst case scenario, you're on corn silage or grass hay then you really need to supplement calcium in that used diet in late gestation to try to prevent it from the get-go. So those, that's what we wanted to talk to you about a little bit today. Thank you very much. Thank you.